Hello gamers, I want to talk about something that's been on my mind a lot recently, and that's nostalgia. You see, a few months ago something very sad happened, and that's that Disney Channel shut down in the UK. Disney are trying to push more people onto their Disney Plus platform, and one way of doing that is to get rid of Disney Channel. Now Disney Channel is something that I, like a lot of other people, grew up watching an unhealthy amount of, and I was scrolling through the Disney Plus collection, looking at all of this Disney Channel content that they have on there now that, to be honest, I'll probably never watch again. But there is some stuff on there that I thought was maybe worth a nostalgic rewatch. In particular, these wonderful things called Disney Channel original movies. First of all, I don't think I ever realised just how many Disney Channel movies there are. I looked it up, and according to the internet, there are 109 Disney Channel original movies. Oh, sorry. Original films. So I picked one to watch again. You might know what it is. It's that musical one. It kickstarted several people's careers. It's got that core message about staying true to yourself and being who you want to be. That's right. It's Camp Rock. Okay, okay, okay. I know that High School Musical is the much more popular musical film on Disney Channel, but for right now, I want to talk about Camp Rock because this film, it wasn't quite how I remember it. So Camp Rock came out a little over two years after High School Musical 2 and about a year after High School Musical 1. It really kickstarted several people's careers, including Demi Lovato and the Jonas Brothers. And from what I remember, this movie was actually quite popular when it came out. It was obviously Disney's attempt at further capitalising that whole seeing teenagers thing they got going for themselves, but they needed new actors because the ones that they already had were getting too old. You know, like 23. So the movie follows Mitchie, who's just your typical teenage aspiring musician. You know, she does all the stuff that any other teenage musician would do. Like when she wakes up, the first thing she does is use her wrist to close her open disk drive on her laptop, which immediately starts playing music. That laptop which must have been on all night, preparing for this moment. You know, despite how much of a trope it is for the movie to start with the main character waking up in the morning, I kind of like it just to see all the music related stuff that's packed in Mitchie's room. Because of course, it's very important for this movie to let you know just how much Mitchie loves music. There's a cool bit of like, foreshadowing here, with the Connect 3 poster in Mitchie's room. And while I'm busy nitpicking things in her room, I can't help but think that all the pictures of people all over her walls are just pictures of actors that auditioned for the movie. There's this whole sequence where Mitchie tries on different clothes and plays different instruments, but this whole time she's supposed to be getting ready for school. Like, the very first line of the movie is her mum telling her to get up. I mean, she's probably standing outside her room thinking like, Mitchie, are you getting up? Also, when Mitchie's hand like runs up the keyboard, that's very clearly not her hand. I'll show you the two shots. Look, here's Demi Lovato playing the keyboard. Right? And here's that close up. I guess maybe they had to do the take separately because it was so important that they just needed to get it. Later on, Mitchie has breakfast with her mum, and then there's this segment on the news about how this guy called Shane Gray from the boy band called Connect Three is causing problems with his bandmates and with the label and with the press. His what is wrong with that boy? He's got everything except a clue. Then they start talking about how Mitchie really wants to go to Camp Rock, but her parents can't afford it, and now she's really upset. She comes home from her last day of school and apparently she also has a part-time job at a burger place, which brings up my favourite line in the entire movie. How was work? Uh, you know Barneys? We serve burgers with a Barney smile. So what's for dinner? Burgers. When I was watching Cam Rock for this video, I couldn't help but completely lose it the first time I heard this line. I don't know what I find so funny about it. I'm really worn out from serving burgers at the burger place that I work at, and honestly, I wish I just never had to see another burger again. Anyway, what's for dinner? Burgers. But of course, Mitchie's bad day doesn't stay bad for much longer. Okay, I can't stand it. Tell her. Well, Steve, she just got home. Tell me what. Okay, honey, drum roll. Mom. Okay, you're going to Camp Rock. What? She said you're going to Camp Rock. Well, actually, we're going. Connie's what? catering is going camping. Business is slow in the summer. This is a steady job, and you get to go to camp at a discounted rate. <laughs> But you have to help out in the kitchen. There's always a catch, isn't there? Thank you! Thank you like a million times! <laughs> <laughs> so now everybody arrives at Camp Rock and we get a first look at what all the other campers are like. Now, of course, this is a music camp, so we've got to have stuff to make it musical, right? Oh, I know. Put a keyboard on that car. Everybody's being wacky and spontaneous. People are dancing. This one guy does a backflip off a bus. This guy that's clearly like the drummer dude of the movie is doing a beat on the side of the bus. Everybody gathers for orientation and Mitchie meets some of the other characters. Like there's Tess Tyler, who's the movie's villain. The drummer guy's still going at it. And then there's Caitlin, who introduces herself to Mitchie as Camper today, top selling music producer tomorrow. Check me out. Cool. <laughs> that seemed way easier than expected. Maybe I should give it a go. Cool. 
Oh. <laughs> but of course, there's still someone left to introduce, and that's the hottest music sensation the world's ever seen. I'm Shane Gray for crying out loud. So Shane Gray, played by Joe Jonas, has been sent to the camp against his wishes in an effort to fix his bad image with the press. And what's more, the winner of Camp Rock's final jam gets a recording deal with Joe Jonas. Or, sorry, Shane Gray and Connect 3. <laughs> if you really want to get an idea of how old this movie is, there's a CRT in the limo. Like, you know, one of those big, fat TVs? If that thing comes loose in an accident, it's going to decapitate Kevin Jonas. So loads of people have already started preparing for Final Jam, including Mitchie, who goes to a secluded part of camp to play the song because she's too nervous to play in front of anybody else. And who happens to overhear the song but none other than Shane Gray? Outside. In the bushes. Behind a closed window. So, really, it probably sounded less like this. This is real. and more like this. Mitchy then meets Lola, who's another camper. She's not really important, she just kind of sings a song and then checks out for the rest of the movie. I also noticed at this point just how much younger a lot of the extras look from all of the main characters. Apparently the main actors were actually the same age as most of the characters they were supposed to be playing, which is great because too often movies have people in their 20s playing high schoolers, but I guess the main cast's makeup makes them look a little bit weird next to the extras. Also, loads of the extras look really bored during all the musical performances. Like the director told them all, yeah, you guys have got to be really pumped for these performances, you're really excited to be here. And then after like 10 seconds, they just didn't care anymore. And then Mitchie bumps into Tess again, and her and her cronies start immediately questioning Mitchie on what her parents do. Hey, is your dad Nicky Torres the composer? My dad staged one of his shows. No. So what does he do? And a hardware store. But my mom. Yeah? What? Uh, the president of Hot Tunes TV. No, she's not, Mitchie. So that makes Tess invite Mitchie to move into her cabin, and they all start looking at Mitchie's things and they find her songbook. They all seem really surprised that Mitchie has a songbook. You write songs? You write songs? At Camp Rock? The music camp for music kids. Everybody's having this impromptu jam session because they're so cool and relatable. Whoa. If the class is a rockin', I'm a glad I came knocking. <laughs> what I'm working with this year. Who wants to sing first? Oh, oh. oh my goodness. All right, uh, Eeny, Meeny, Miney, you. Me? Can't argue with a finger. This guy's a dick. Do you think he does this every year? Like, he picks the one person in the class that doesn't want to sing and makes them sing? Look at this. She's the only person, the only person in the class without her hand up. And he's just like, yeah, you. But of course, Mitchie smashes it because she's the main character. But now it's time to check back in with Shane Gray, who's being made to teach a hip-hop class. Grab a mic and a hat. What now? He just starts dancing and expects all of them to get it. And like, naturally, they're all looking at each other like, what exactly does he expect us to do here? But then not 10 seconds later, they just get it. So then they all break into this synchronized dance routine with no rehearsal whatsoever. What? Talk about dancing to the beat of a different drum. Do you get it? Where were you this morning? Look, as cool as these trumpet drinks things seem, just remember that unless those trumpets are brand new, then they've had buckets, and I mean buckets of people's spit go through them. But now it's time for yet another performance from Camp Rock, and see if you can spot this one. So we call this the Campfire Jam! Did you catch that? They're all cheering here, and then the camera angle changes and they're still like, cheering, but they're not moving. <laughs> it's about expression, the freedom to be who you really want to be! Hit it! 
This is kind of Tess's I'm better than you song. Like, it's basically just another version of Sharpe at this point. One of the things that I noticed with this movie is the camp has quite a lot of kids in it, but only a few of them ever really seem to perform. They've already established that this camp costs a lot of money, so your parents pay tons to send you here, and then you get there and they're just like, yeah, sorry, we would let you perform, but you're not a named character, so you'll just have to sit in the audience. Can a guy get some peace? Sorry, I... Sorry. You said that already. This is the point in the movie where Shane and Mitchie properly talk for the first time, and Shane talks to Mitchie about how his record label is stifling his creativity, and it's preventing the band from taking their music to strange new places. Barbershop is in danger of growing stale. I'm taking it to strange new places. Number eight? Uh. Number eight? Uh. Then there's this segment where Shane plays on acoustic guitar for Mitchie, but like, he also has backing vocals when he sings. You're the voice I hear inside my head, the reason that I'm singing, I need to find you. Hey, Miss Torres. Hi, Caitlin. Thanks for coming in early. Taco night takes the entire kitchen staff and our six hands. Six? Yeah, my daughter. It's about to go down. So earlier in the movie, Caitlin gets put on kitchen duty as punishment for throwing dry spaghetti at Tess. And now she's in danger of finding out Mitchie's secret. So let's just time how long it takes Caitlin to find out. Hey, you must be hands five and six. I didn't know Connie had a daughter. I'm Caitlin. Do you need some help? Mitchie? So it takes Caitlin all of five seconds to find out Mitchie's secret and then they sort of have an argument and they don't really like each other anymore. But then later that night there's a thing called the pajama jam, which like all the other jams, only one person gets to perform. But then Mitchie and Caitlin become friends again, it's all good. Does this look like a record, girls? Huh? I mean a CD. So you're telling me that these two music-obsessed people have no idea what a record is? You know that Apple advert from a few years back where there's that girl on her MacBook and her neighbor's like, What you doing on your computer? And she's like, What's a computer? This is the Disney Channel equivalent of that. Hand clapping, hip shaking. Did Camp Rock run out of plates? But Shane Gray is now starting to settle into camp, and he gets this idea in his head that he now needs to find the girl with the voice. So then he tells this guy, and this guy passes it around the camp, and now every girl knows that Shane Gray is looking for someone with a voice. And I never gonna wanna stop this amuse, take the the crew, wanna shake us. What an insult it is that somebody would rather jump into a lake than hear you sing anymore. Seriously, Mom. Okay, we're done with the dishes. Okay, girls, have fun at the campfire. Okay. Thanks. Bye, bye. I love you, Mom. Love you too, bye. Oh no. Hey, Mitchie. Tell us about your mom again. She's not president of Hot Tunes TV China. What's that? She's not president? You mean you lied to everybody? You mean you lied, Mitchy? You lied to everybody about who your mum was just so you could fit in? That's... that's not that bad, actually. I mean, yeah, it's not a good thing, but considering the environment that she's in places such a high importance on what your family members do, it kind of makes sense that she would lie about something like that. The movie tries to make it seem like this is the point where everything falls apart for Mitchie and she's got to build it back up, but really the only person who's upset is Shane and everybody else just kind of gets on with it. Make our own group. Is there about to be a montage? 
So now it's the day of final jam, and Caitlin and Mitchie have a good plan worked out for themselves. But I have it on good authority that something else might just go wrong at the very end. So earlier on, Tess finds Mitchie's songbook and then realises that Shane Gray's song that he's trying to find is the song that Mitchie wrote. So she's trying to stop Mitchie from being able to perform in final jam, so then, I don't know, she can have Shane Gray all to herself or something? I'm sure they have it! Okay, she has officially lost it. No, I didn't lose anything. You guys stole it. What? What's going on here? Tess thinks that Mitchie and Caitlin stole her charm bracelet. What? Let me just scope this out, and then I'll have a quick look in your cabin, right? Fine, whatever. You're not gonna find anything, because I didn't... I like how it takes Brown all of five seconds to find this charm bracelet that was missing. He just walks into the kitchen and goes, Okay, don't worry, Tess. I'll find your charm bracelet. There it is. Well, rules are rules. And since it's the end of camp, I have no choice. I've got to ban you guys from the rest of camp activities. Until the end of Final Jam. We didn't do anything. She's lying. Do you have any proof? No, but... Well, then I'm sorry. My hands are tied. Until the end of Final Jam. I guess the budget ran a bit thin at this point because the sign on the barn looks so CGI it hurts. But now it's time for Final Jam, which takes place in this barn that they only seem to use for Final Jam. The Final Jam barn, if you will. Tonight! Music history will be made as Camp Rock finds a new Final Jam winner! The first performance of Final Jam is this Disney-fied hip-hop song with the two like rapper characters and then Ella, Tess's friend. You see, Ella and Peggy were meant to be Tess's background singers for her performance, but then they had an argument and they abandoned her right before they were meant to start. This is a weird thing. But we know that Ella's been rehearsing with Tess for days before, but now she's just able to join this other performance with zero rehearsal. The movie doesn't do a very good job of explaining the logistics of Final Jam. Like, where do these trampolines come from? Do they have like a trampoline warehouse that they keep all the trampolines in in case somebody wants to do a trampoline performance? The second performance is Tess, and her famous mum shows up, but then her famous mum has to take a famous phone call halfway through, causing her to almost fall off the stage. Apparently. Well, it looks like we are basically finished the co Put it on pause. We have a last minute addition. Come on up, Margaret Dupree. So then Peggy gets a last minute performance, even though earlier there was this whole thing about like the final list for Final Jam, so I guess people had to apply to be on Final Jam, but then like Peggy just gets to divert the application process for no reason whatsoever. You know what, at this point I just stopped really asking questions about the logic behind this movie. So Peggy does her performance and sort of mimes playing the guitar. And that brings us to the end of Final Jam. That's right. The end of Final Jam. I've always been the kind of girl. You didn't think that Mitchie would actually not sing her song, did you? Shane Gray does this weird slow motion turnaround when he realises that the girl he was looking for is actually Mitchie. That's the song. I'm not going to play the full song because YouTube's copyright would just destroy me, but Shane joins in and they have like this duet moment. Okay gang, this is it. The winner of Final Jam this year is... Drum roll please. Margaret Dupree! Yes! Yeah. Peggy wins Final Jam. It's a nice wholesome moment to have Mitchie not win. It's kind of like that scene in Cars where Lightning McQueen pushes King over the line. So then Tess like half apologises to Mitchie and to Caitlin, and then Shane and Mitchie agree to have a canoe ride later. And then everyone does a final song together. It's a big thing, everyone's singing and dancing. You can see the film cameras in some of the shots. I think the movie tries to play it off like the press were there covering it, but then like the camera isn't in these shots, and then it is in these shots. So anyway, that was Camp Rock, 
And I guess in the end it really was a Camp Rock after all. I've just realised that I've been talking about Camp Rock for so long that it's now dark outside. A lot of this movie seems like High School Musical with just way less thought put into it. They obviously wanted another movie with songs in it, but Camp Rock isn't a musical like High School Musical was. None of the songs actually reference what's going on in the story at all. They're just performances for the sake of performances. It's also got the same morals, like be yourself and don't try and be something you're not. But they seem more tacked on in random places rather than an actual part of the story. There are also large parts of the movie that feel like they serve no purpose. Like the whole setup at the beginning with Mitchie being sad that she can't go to Cam Rock, you could just delete that and the entire movie wouldn't change. So it was around this time that Disney Channel and Nickelodeon really started going hardcore into the like famous teenagers storylines that they were doing. I've seen this dubbed as the Hannah Montana effect online because that was one of the earlier examples. When I watched this movie when I was younger I guess I didn't really notice it but now watching it it just becomes so apparent all the obvious marketing decisions that influenced it. Like how the Jonas Brothers are only in this movie to boost sales of their records. Well I hope you enjoyed my look at Camp Rock. Disney Channel movies are always cringy to watch but they're a fun kind of cringe and I honestly enjoyed re-watching this. Maybe I'll do more Disney Channel movies in the future but for now goodbye and keep Camp Rocking.